Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to go through some purchasing decisions uh, analysis. So this is slightly different to some, some of the other data sets that you might see in the examples that I run through, but um, because I want to start varying things up a little bit, I want to go into the data that's slightly different than just your generic sales and finance data. Um, I get a lot of requests for different data, so so that's uh, that's what we're going to do in time. We're going to go through a lot of different data scenarios and dive into how you can analyze things in a slightly different way. But in saying that, it's always the same techniques in Power BI. Nothing really changes. You still have to, uh, you know, write the similar sort of DAX formula, uh, use the similar uh, sort of DAX techniques, uh, and then visualize them in a really compelling way. None of that changes. So. I just want to go over the data that we're actually working with here. So this is some invoicing information. So think about your procurement team. They obviously go and buy a lot of things. They go and buy a lot of services, products, etc. in an organization. Um, and it could be throughout your all the different areas of your organization. Uh, it could be from your marketing to your manufacturing to your sales teams, etc. Uh, usually all of those sort of purchasing decisions go through your procurement team. And so this is a data set that you might extract from that type of thing. Uh, or that type of function and you've got things like um, you know we're looking at a particular item uh, which I have in a table here so we've got some products and services that we um, that we're purchasing and that this, this is obviously a lookup table and then the invoicing details actually shows you okay what are we actually buying and so in this case we've got um, what item it is what currency it was in what department who, who's allowed to approve it um, the quantity price discount payment terms vendor Etc. So this is all. This is this carries all the key information that um, you would want to know if you were purchasing off someone, um, or if you're a large organization purchasing. So let's go and have a look at the data model. So we've got, uh, we've got, and if, if you recognize, you know, if you're looking at this and thinking, wow, this looks really similar to a lot of the other examples that I run through. Well, you're not wrong because it is, and that's what, uh, and that's where the sort of my best practices around data modeling come in. Is it's always the same. You want to put your lookup tables at the top. Um, and then you want to put your fact table down the bottom. So nothing actually changes there from data set to data set. It's not always that simple, but in a lot of cases, it usually is. Um, so um, try and simplify things, make things easy for yourself uh, in setting up your data model similar to this. Okay, so we've got dates, exchange rate, items, vendors, and these all feed down via relationships to our invoicing details. So I just want to show you how we can run analysis over this data set, basically. So uh, we can, you know, obviously we can go and work out, okay, well, what's our, what was, what's the price of things that we're purchasing? Um, and this, I mean, there's heaps of insight we could get from this. We could, we could look at it from a vendor perspective. Um, we could look at it from a uh, which department's purchasing what. You know, we've got a lot of filters here, which is fantastic. So there's a lot of information that we could actually extract really, really quickly. Now the key thing, the key thing that we need to work out here is we need to work out based on we want to we want we want a, a figure a value that is actually in our in our base currency. So we need to adjust it by the exchange rate, um, and we also need to account for the discount that we might get, right? So th this discount looks like a zero all the way down, but in some cases it might be more, and you need to actually take that off the unit price. So we need to run a relatively um, advanced iterating function. Well, it's not, if you understand iterators, it's not advanced, but if you're still getting your head around iterators and trying to understand, well, what, what do you actually do with iterators? Well, here's an example of where things can get really advanced and why you, and where you have to use iterators, where you want to use iterators um, to get um, a lot of logic inside of a measure. So I'm going to create a measure. I'm going to call it um, invoicing, invoicing total. Invoicing totals. And I'm going to go sum X here. And then I'm going to say jump to the invoicing details table. And then this is where I'm going to place my logic. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go quantity, item quantity, times by the unit price. Then I'm going to, I'm just going to put some brackets around here. I'm then going to times this by one minus the discount percentage. And so what I might do is I'll put this on another line, see if that makes it look a little bit more intuitive, potentially. Uh, and then I'm going to divide by the related currency. So we have to reach back up to the exchange rate table and I'm going to go and find the exchange rate here. And so you see how advanced you can actually get inside of iterating functions. It's pretty amazing, right? There's actually three 
different calculations that uh, each different row it's going to happen on each different row and what I could also do is say this is the invoicing amount in base currency base base currency with discounts cool so now we have our invoicing total and uh, we need to make sure see why this isn't working just give me a second so I think I've got the wrong one in there so we need to actually put rate yes we need to put this to rate because I actually was doing it by a text text number and now we have our value here right and so what it's doing on every single row here it's going uh, the uh, item quantity times the unit price then applying the discount to whatever um, purchase we might have to, to whatever we might have got there and then it's adjusting it by this currency ID uh, which reaches back up into the exchange rate table so pretty awesome logic um, on a per row basis and then it does that sum does the sum inside of the iterating function so a really cool example of how you can utilize iterating functions now really quickly if you think about it we can we can get a lot of insight from here so first of all we can see okay well uh, we, we, in which currencies are we deriving a lot of our profit from so um, so I could check check that out there um, I could also just do some copying and pasting and seeing well uh, who who are we actually purchasing this stuff off who are we actually purchasing our um, our products off and so here we can very quickly see from high to low our best our best vendors and then we might also want to see okay well what, what what's happening from a department perspective so you see how quick and easy it is I mean Power BI is just a fantastic way to really find this insight quickly and then we could also look at it from a regional perspective where are we where are we actually getting this stuff from so we might want to um, we might want to create another And this is where data discovery inside of Power BI, regardless of what sort of scenario it is, you know, you can do so much just with one calculation, right? And so very quickly, I can just maneuver my way around here uh, and and find a whole whole lot of insight really quickly. And I, I obviously would want to make this look, um, you know, much better in terms of better colors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, and then I'm just going to also I'm going to utilize. Uh, this map here and we're going to place we'll go state code in here so obviously now we have a pretty good picture of our, our spending right so our spending in currencies from all of these different locations we can dive into say manufacturing uh, you know where, where it's actually coming from we might want to change a few things like um, the filtering obviously want this to work well um, and so we might want to go around the model and just and fix that up. I guess and, you know, and in, and in, in, in showing you this, I'm actually showing you how you can really quickly make some some pretty um some pretty good um pretty good visualizations as well. And that's and that's that's also always key. And so what I might also do here is you know you might also change the background a bit. And then we could also use some shapes here to. Um, and this is honestly what I'm what I'm showing you here is, is a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I do all the time, um, you know, and making making things sort of um, you know look good and stand out, etc. And so you know, very quickly we can uh, optimize here for our purchasing decisions. We can find some insight from our procurement information, uh, and And make our, make our insights look relatively compelling you can utilize the power of the data model to really filter all this information really quickly and 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 that's what um, you know that's what I recommend using I recommend trying to utilize the filtering that you can get from Power BI as much as possible because if you think about it we've only created one DAX formula here we haven't done anything too difficult or um, you know or, or complex it's just a matter of um, placing placing these details in the um, yeah, you know, placing it against the right context, and then you're getting these compelling visualizations really, really quickly. And I've utilized, uh, really like this this one here. You can really dive into um, information spatially really, really quickly. So there's a few more things that I would honestly do here, but probably not going to just spend time doing that. On, um, there's probably better things to watch, better examples um, that I showcase. So definitely want you to find those. 
Um, but I just wanted to show you know on any data set you can work with a procurement data set, extract really good insights, you know, really really quickly. And um, and and that's sort of just the key thing. That's the key thing that I wanted to get across today. Um, you know, and it's taken us what less about five five ten minutes to actually showcase something. Um, you know, r very insightful. I mean, historically could have taken a long time to create. So you know, that's really the power that you have. Um, you, know, you have your hands now with Power BI. Okay, so I'm just going around, just, just updating the titles here, and then, but uh, but I'm about to sign off on this uh, on this video tutorial. Um, hopefully, you found you know found this enlightening. You know, you shouldn't you're not only uh, restricted to you know working with some, the same data sets. You've got a whole range of different data sets, and you can get them off Enterprise DNA. You know, you can actually download this resource um, and get the data sets. So um, uh, all it takes is just a small investment. Check out the description. Um, but you know, hopefully, you can see amazing insight across a range of scenarios it's all possible in power bi and it doesn't take long it's really quite straight uh, straightforward and um, all it took in this case was understanding a bit a uh, bit more around an iterating function um, but um, you know if you can get your head around that you're doing you're doing very very well inside of power bi okay good luck with this one uh, hopefully um, you know you can apply some of these um, simple techniques we've gone through today um, in your own uh, in your own analysis good luck